the claim that Christianity is true is the claim that Jesus rose from the dead and that Jesus is God and that Jesus' teaching is going to save you from hell. And when you put your faith in him, you're going to heaven because of what he did. We can't just say that is what happened. We have to be willing to say, well, why do you think it's true? Otherwise, you don't respect your listener. As we wrap up, one of the things that I want to make sure to highlight is, I think, the most compelling argument. And that is that Jesus rose from the dead. I mean, that's, that is the center of the Christian faith. And the, the witnesses attested that Jesus rose from the dead after hostile witnesses confirmed that he was dead. Those witnesses were in a position to know whether their claim was true or false. Those witnesses were willing to die. People don't normally die for something they know to be a lie. The witnesses were not limited to the 12 apostles, or, or I should say the 11. The witnesses included hundreds, Paul reports, after Jesus rose from the dead and before he ascended, hundreds of people do not typically have a group hallucination of something of this sort, and then go out and tell their friends and family, I have to believe in this man is God, knowing that their friends and family are going to push them out of their entire social circle, if, if that's true. They stood to gain nothing. These men were not deceivers. These men were simple fishermen. They were not the kind of people that would cook up a world dominating scheme. They're certainly not the kind of people that, you know, some people have accused the Roman Empire of creating Jesus as a myth in order to unite the empire. The, the historians show that, that the overall picture of Christianity forming in that first century in Israel is correct. And, and the historians attest to what was being taught at that time and that it was being believed. What could account for that level of belief other than that some people had actually seen the things that are attested? So the, these arguments for the resurrection, you know, the, the multiple witnesses that corroborate each other, but that read as reliable witnesses with slight detail variations here and there and surface level contradictions like we've discussed with Lydia McGrew in the past. All of this is exactly what you would expect if in the court of law you wanted to establish that an event actually took place. Are the people reliable? Has their recorded testimony been transmitted to us reliably? These people act as reliable witnesses who were truly convinced. Luke, an, an excellent historian, the transmission of Luke and his writings to us is demonstrable by historical standards. This is the case for the resurrection of Jesus, and you can find a simplified summary of it in Josh McDowell's book, More Than a Carpenter, and you can find much more in his books like The Evidence That Demands a Verdict. But those are the kinds of things that if you wanted to tell people why you're a Christian, you really ought to get around to talking about. Because the claim that Christianity is true is the claim that Jesus rose from the dead and that Jesus is God, and that Jesus' teaching is going to save you from hell. And when you put your faith in him, you're going to heaven because of what he did. We can't just say that is what happened. We have to be willing to say, well, why do you think it's true? Otherwise, you don't respect your listener. The apostles respected their listeners. And so the question that I give to you, presuppositionalists, you people who advocate blind faith, and by the way, I mean the same people, is do you respect your listeners and do you respect your God enough that you will do what the apostles did? Because God is watching you.